it seems like the social engineers have big plans for blockchain. What are the features of this tech which will make it so uniquely suited for their purposes? And how do these features make it suited for these purposes? Well, the, the idea of blockchain is it's a permanent ledger and it's an interoperable data ledger. So when in, in a machine learning environment, so a lot of what's coming with the impact investing space is that from the back end, they're going to feed the data collected, the impact data um, into something called ocean protocol. And this includes singularity net uh, to try to trigger this AI. But data that is uncorrelated to anything, it's just like, you know, puzzle pieces that are thrown out on a table, they're not particularly useful, but when they're actually put together to make the picture, then they become more useful. And so the element of blockchain is that it is, um, uh, it's interoperable and it's, it's has more granular depth is the interrelatability of the different elements, right? Like your health data connected to your education data connected to your behavioral data. All of these helps the, the system learn you and predictably profile you in a way that I think will help with the digital twinning and help it start to the system, like the quantum computing AI system, understand what it is like to be a human being or be a tree or be a you know a fish or wh wherever they're putting the sensor networks attached to that. Um, so it's the interoperability. And then I would say from the impact investing space, it's it's very closely linked to the to uh, programmable money, right? And I, it's not even money, it's like script, that your ability to interface with smart environments is tracked on blockchain. And so beyond like a cash monetary system, your rights and privileges become tokens on blockchain and they can be programmed. And so your ability to function in the physical world, um, the blockchain piece gets built into geofencing and gamification, right? The leveling up, do you have the token that will allow you to do this particular task you're attempting to do? Does your biosensor say that you're allowed to do this thing, that your health status is such that you can leave your house or that your health status is such that you can go to the grocery store? And so all of that needs to be tracked on the ledger system. The other piece is that they've been really far advanced in developing electronic health records on blockchain. And that, that was actually the pioneer and that was the state of Delaware, right? So that's where Biden is from. And so if we understand single payer, um, what Zeke Emanuel has done, whose family is very deeply invested in uh, impact investing and tech, and Zeke is now based at Penn, which is sort of the hotbed of all of this, that your electronic health record and your single payer system, that's the carrot that will then hook you into the Borg. And this Borg is beyond just, you know, tracking your cell therapies or tracking your uh, medical interventions are tracking your good health behaviors or your bad health behaviors. But increasingly, there, there's a person named Melanie Swan who has done a really deep dive into transhumanism and blockchain brains. So she imagines that this hive mind consciousness, that we will all be engaged in a smart contract negotiations, even with one another and machines. And so I think in some respects, this idea of rooms, like digital rooms on social media, is a precursor to a hive mind blockchain brain, right? Like you'll have a token to access into a room where you do collaboration around problems, issues, what have you. Some of those entities in that space will be machine consciousness. Some of them will be human consciousness and that there will be uh, outputs tracked on the blockchain in terms of your relative worth to the conversation and that that, that, that payment will track you um, you know, I'll talk about this a, bit, a little bit later, but that your blockchain wallet almost becomes your portal that attaches your digital twin you to your material world you. And it's the ledger system that, that tracks um, everything across your real world into the metaverse. And, and ultimately blockchain was established to track digital assets online. It was to allow this new version of digital capitalism to, to, to grow, so. Do you draw a distinction between blockchain as it is, is involved in Bitcoin versus in central bank, central bank digital currencies? Or do you think uh, it's equally pernicious? So the idea around uh, people that are yeah. independently trying to use blockchain for whatever their purpose is versus the organized institutional central bank uh, promotion of it. 
Do you draw any difference so, between yeah. the two? Well, yeah, I've, I've been pretty clear about this on my, on my past statements, but so it's important that people understand where I came into my blockchain research from. And from my earliest blog in early 2017, I was interrogating blockchain because I understood it as being part of tracking impact investing. And my exposure to it was around putting toddlers on blockchain and, and them framing it that these toddlers would build social capital by having a blockchain identity and performing good behavior in preschool. And then the, the next thing I understood was that blockchain was going to be used to track prenatal healthcare compliance and global humanitarian aid. So, and this is, these are women, these were women in Tanzania who were uh, being given prenatal care, which I fully agree with, but at the same time, it is unclear whether that is the care of their choice. And oftentimes these global aid systems are tied to big pharma. So tying uh, somebody's compliance potentially to a big pharmaceutical company's prenatal protocol, I, I believe is a system of domination and having blockchain behavioral script tied to that is a, is a terrible, terrible thing. And then the next thing I looked at was using humanitarian aid to track uh, refugee populations and to gather their biometrics and have their grocery payments tied to that. Okay. So this was my introduction to blockchain. And then also the state of Illinois that was looking at putting um, people's access to food benefits on SNAP benefits on blockchain and coding it with good behavior and saying what was, what you was the good food choice and what was the bad food choice and tracking it and having financial incentives attached to it and putting uh, the digital pilot to put Illinois babies on blockchain. Okay, birth certificates, having all the birth certificates on blockchain. So if I, I and, and then later on, I mean, this is not even to like talk about cell therapies on blockchain and blockchain brains and blockchain gamification. Like there are many, many elements. And I find that the conversation, really most people, I would say 80% of the people are talking about it in terms of finance and then to a certain extent media, right? And they're not talking about any of the other stuff. I, I really have yet to find many people, um, handful, there's like a small handful of people who are willing to surface what is actually going on with blockchain and, and the spatial web and understanding that blockchain is about tracking you as a character in the video game run by the CIA. And so, you know, I find it very difficult to believe that people are operating from a place of good faith um, if they're not giving equal airtime to all of these other elements and framing it as a liberation, because at what cost is your financial security if what you're saying is by not interrogating the system, uh, children in Africa or children in Illinois are going to be put on blockchain at birth or pre-birth. That's pretty horrific. And I've actually had people tell me, well, that, there's nothing we can do about it. So just invest better on your crypto. And to me, my whole framing is that this is a spiritual engagement. This is us being asked to be better humans than we have been, and that we need to come at this from a place of trying to make things right, even against maybe what seems to be insurmountable odds. And so karmically, I think if you step into this space from a place of saying, well, there's nothing we can do about putting babies on blockchain or putting um, trees on blockchain or putting other living beings on blockchain so they can be part of an impact market, then I, I don't think we're on that right road. And, and that's my position. I know I'm, I'm an outlier in that position, but um, because of my journey and how I got here, that's the hard line I take.